Welcome to Natchat. My name is Paul Spanos. And today we have with us Kelly Leeds. And Kelly is a registered migration agent based in Melbourne. Hello, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, welcome to our program. Today we're going to discuss immigration issues. And since you are the expert, we would like to um, have some, uh, uh, some answers, uh, basic answers in relation to immigration uh, in Australia. Okay, before we start, can you talk to us about yourself. How did you come up to be an agent and you interested in that job and uh, a little bit of your background as, as well? Okay. Um, I think it's something that I found later in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't start it when I was a young girl. Mm -hmm. I'm not a young girl anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that I found along the way mm -hmm. and um, I thought it was interesting. I did have a business consulting background, mm -hmm. uh, so I dealt a lot with legislation, okay. state departments, interpreting the legislation and so forth. So mm -hmm. I felt that that background would actually be of high benefit and the whole process of immigration and what the requirements um, really interested me, and it, it's human stories. And, the, and 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 apart from interested from business point of view, you seem to be quite comfortable dealing with um, government departments and offices and uh, legislation. Oh, I'm comfortable with that. Oh, yeah, that, that's. I'm comfortable with that. I don't uh, have a problem with that one. <laughs> and, and I think this is how this is how uh, I invited you because it was very very interesting the discussions we had in in relation to immigration issues. Uh, so welcome again and. Uh, just the, as a, as a very, uh, first general question, how easy it is for someone to come to Australia, to your judgment? Well, I wouldn't call it easy, but I wouldn't call it hard either. Okay. Um, it's all um, it's all outlined. Okay. It's um, it's very like it's well, I wouldn't say black and white. Yes, yeah. but um, it's got its steps. So mm -hmm. somebody's got a strategy. They first have to see whether they meet. The criteria that are required mm -hmm. okay so if you've got that or if you can develop a strategy to develop those that you can end up coming to Australia well it's fine so I wouldn't call it easy I wouldn't call it hard okay is it in, in relation to information is it difficult to find I think the immigration website mm -hmm. has a treasure of information okay. that people can actually look at Yes, I can see that some of it may not be easy to understand. Mm -hmm. um, it may be easy for me to understand when I see it because I, I have a certain background. Yeah. Um, but um, I think people can get some basic information okay. to start off with. Oh. Very well, for example, what type of, uh, yeah, if, if, if I'm interested to come to Australia as, as, as a migrant, mm -hmm. um, and uh, either it is family or skill migration, at least to get the very first steps, information, it is easily accessible. The immigration website has quite a lot of information. Okay. Family-related matters mm -hmm. are actually available in other languages as well. So oh, people okay. just have to look into those pages and they'll find certain documents are mm -hmm. available in other languages. Mm -hmm. um, skill is not available in other languages and that's understandable. You need to have competent and above English Absolutely. to apply for a visa anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming, and rightly so, immigration has decided, well, I don't need to give it in other languages. In my, uh, 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 when I meet uh, different migrants that they come recently to Australia, they do have complaints about the, it is too expensive um, and, um, and the process takes too long. Um, uh, what, is, uh, what is your perception in those two issues? Okay, um, I think the prices, yes, they do shock us as well at okay. times, right. um, especially with the family visas. And because that's very much, there's, there's a high human factor involved okay. in family right. visas. Uh, when you see that a family would like to make a better future for themselves here, okay. and especially like, you know, if one is a citizen and maybe the children are also citizens, All right. okay, and the one parent isn't, and this huge expense that they need to go through, which can be quite a big hardship for oh, them. Okay. Um, we don't like it as well. Yeah, yeah, but on yeah. the other hand, visa application charges mm. are actually structured in such a way to cover um, quite a 
a significant part of the cost for every application. A the cost processing. living in Australia? No, a cost for the immigration department. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So. Um, the immigration department has taken a, a view of I uh, shouldn't uh, put this cost mm -hmm. on the taxpayer. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. so it, that's so why. So you apply you for the visa. They basically, the yeah, they they're doing they doing the mathematics and their mm. calculations. I mean, I haven't gotten into that, yes, but that's fine. I'm sure if we look into it in more yeah. detail, we will find that that is actually a cost okay. in the processing of every application, yes. the time, the hours spent, and all that sort of thing. Yes. But but just to be sort of um, quite free. Um, migration influx from parents, uh, talking about 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. um, the, when Southern Europeans did come here, they, they brought their, their parents, whatever age okay. that was, okay. and then they got their sort of the, their pension quite easy. Okay, we are talking about 50s and 60s. Correct. We are talking about a lot of other things that, gee, I think we need two programs to talk about them. Oh yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right, okay. we'll just, we'll just um, take the simplicity. Yes, because there was approach. a lot of political stuff involved exactly. back then as well. Yes. So there were, there were... And the need for the labour. There labor. were agreements between Absolutely. countries yes. to send yeah. labour over and so forth. So, and Australia didn't have a pop huge okay. population or right. a big population at that time. So they need to build up a population. They need labour to come in. Absolutely. So they'd make agreements with the countries to send labour in. But it's no more that easy. No, no, no. Okay. For example, now today, if I want to bring now we're trying my to protect parents, local labour. Uh, for example, if I want to bring my parents, um, and my parents are in uh, my, my parents are sixty-five mm -hmm. sort of age group, can I do that? Well, of course you can. Oh, all right. But there's two options. Okay. Okay. Uh, because your parents are sixty-five, they're considered age parents, so we're going to yes. do age parent visa. Okay. Yes. Yes. So there's the age parent visa which you apply for, it could take 15 to 18 years okay. for your parents to actually obtain that. It can. It is done onshore, okay. that particular one. That's got a small application charge. It's about 3,000 first go, 2,000 before you get it, about 5,000. Wow. But we do also have the contributor. And now I'm just, I'm not saying exact figures now because there's 135 subclasses wow. of visas. So wow. we don't remember ever no, pricing, no, no, okay? No, no, no. Oh, just um, generic. Yeah. Then there's a contributory one, okay. which uh, does cost you forty to 50000 per parent. Very interesting. I would like to interrupt you on this one, uh, okay. Kelly, and we'll be back shortly. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Night Chat. And with us, we have Kelly, the registered migration agent. And um, Kelly, we were talking about the case of parents. They are 65 now, mm -hmm. and I want to bring them to Australia. And you mentioned about the length of the period could be eight, up to 18 months? No, I mentioned about 15 to 18 years. If we're talking about the normal one, non contributory. Oh, I said months. Yeah, you mentioned years. Yes. yes. How come years? What's mm. the point to make that application? Oh, well, they'll have their visa oh, by well. the time they're 80, 85. It's, it's okay. I recently heard about a grandmother who turned 102 and got her visa. So okay. But look, depends it, it, on it, what in the, the particular type of visa that we're talking about, yes. um, it is, it, we're talking about a visa that's done while they're in Australia, so ah, they okay. will obtain a bridging visa to be able to be living with you while they're waiting for the result. Ah, all right. But you'd have to take care of health insurance and so forth for yes. them. Okay? Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. It's a permanent visa. So basically, oh. once they get it, they're eligible to pensions and so forth and so forth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There is the other option. Uh, it's also an H parent visa, but it's called a contributory one. Mm -hmm. um, the visa application charge for that can ranges. I mean, if you take first installment, second installment, about forty to forty-five thousand. Can I ask you something? What do you mean by contributory? Just to make it sure means, the audience. Well, contributory. It's in, a, it's in a sense, okay, it's, we're talking about a higher visa application charge. A visa application charge is what you pay to immigration okay. to submit a visa. Right. Okay, without that, a visa application is not valid. Okay. So when you're 
paying a visa application charge of forty forty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars mm-hmm. for an aged parent visa, yeah. it means that you are contributing towards that pension that they're going ah, to be getting. Okay. Those visas come out in about eighteen to twenty four months. Okay, that means the, contribu- the, the contributory visa means that you pay a little bit extra mm-hmm. uh, just to cover the, the expenses, insurances exactly. and all sorts of things. For example, somebody who's been living in Australia, okay, yeah. has been working in Australia, so they've made their contributions through their taxes and so forth. Yes, yes. So when they receive those benefits and they receive those pensions, yes. they've contributed. Uh, okay. All okay, right. yeah. here we're yeah. talking about somebody who's at pension age and they've never contributed anything into the country. So okay. what they're saying is if you contribute, yes, the processing is less. Mm-hmm. Now, processing times, it's not because you're paying less, the processing time is more. It has okay. to do with how many applications go in. Okay. Okay. Uh, a visa that has a $40,000 application charge, it's, yes. go- it's going to be less in numbers uh, application right. wise. Okay. 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 So. That means that there's less applications, yes. less workload, visas get processed quicker. Okay. A visa that's got three thousand dollar yes. application charge. Yes. Instead of uh, there might be two or five with the other one, there's a yes. hundred for this one. Uh, so there's a hundred that need yes. to be processed. So okay. that's where your time goes. Now in a, in a, we're talking about roughly one hundred and ninety thousand is the number. That uh, as as Intra- an annual migration, migration program, the annual yeah well that's the annual migration program no. set by the immigration department through the budget. Does this number has a specific ceiling for each immigration category? For example, it does family up to that. It does. There are I would say take it as a rule. Okay. That every subclass is 135 subclasses. Oh. Currently, you're able to apply for 135 different subclasses. Wow, that's what okay. we need a special and agent for. And we've got for. another, I don't know, 50 or 60 that are running that may have stopped. Yes. But um, people are here with those visas. So okay. we also need to take care of those people too because they may have a problem with their visa, need to apply for another one, need to renew this one and so forth. Because they mentioned in 2012 the legislation has changed to simplify, they, they have uh, become less categories of visas. Yeah, they've joined some together. They've joined some together. There's more than 135. And we're talking about those many categories, but let's return back to the question, do they have a specific ceiling for each category, for example, to call parents no more than. I understand. As a rule, what we should be saying is that every subclass does have a ceiling. Uh, Sometimes within subclasses, there are ceilings, for example, on occupations. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. We've got the skill select visas. Mm, mm, Then they've mm. got occupations that are on the list, but there's a set ceiling for each type of occupation. Okay. However, there are some categories, subclasses, mm-hmm. we should call them really, mm-hmm. uh, that don't have and do never take ceilings. Okay. For oh. example, partner visas. Ah. There is no ceiling on yes, partner visas. Yes, because the legal, the legal rights override the ceiling. Well, reunion of family yeah. cannot take cannot ceilings. Take, yes, um, yes. So it's partner visas and um, child visas. Okay. We're talking about the immediate unit. All right. Okay. okay. So parent visas, unfortunately, are not included in the no ceiling. Now, just to ask another question here. If the parents live overseas, Australian Aussie citizens, mm-hmm. but they live overseas for various reasons. They, they, um, they work overseas for the next five years because they work for a company or something. And they do have children over there. Do they automatically have the right to have a visa for the children? Okay. Even though live overseas, you you are talking about parent who I, parents who are or a parent who is an Australian citizen who are both Australian citizens. Who are both Australian citizens, and they go to United to United Kingdom, right. for example, to okay. work for five years, special contract, mm-hmm. and uh, they do have two children over there. Do they children that were born there? Born That's there, yeah, born yes. there. Yeah. That that becomes that becomes an application okay. for an Australian citizen by descent. Ah, uh, okay. okay. But that, that should be a normal process, though. So it it is be. quite normal once you prove that one parent is an Australian citizen. Yes. Um, at the time that the child is born. Yes. Um, it's it's a typicality okay. to get the by descent. It, it, now, by by the feedback we've got now, obviously the partner's visa is must be the most common within the family. 
Yes, it is. Visa. It is. It is the highest application the highest. rate. Yes. And uh, easier I want to, to process. point out something to you, though, okay. uh, because you're talking about children. Okay. And it's something that people still get very confused. Okay. From August eighty six, nineteen eighty six onwards, a child born in Australia is not automatically an Australian citizen. We're going to talk about it okay. immediately when we come Good. back. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We'll see you shortly after the break. Welcome back to NATSAT and uh, we continue our conversation with uh, uh, migration issues with uh, migration registered migration agent Kelly. Kelly, uh, let's continue and let's discuss about the issue that uh, people want to use their children to get citizenship and how does this work and how this can be used or not anymore okay well it was something that was being used many years okay. we know somebody would come over as a tourist to australia they were pregnant they you know within the three months they were here as a tourist the baby was born the baby was a citizen okay okay they didn't give rights to the parents all right but at some stage in the future because the child could come back to australia yes, yes. sponsored under parent visa and so forth mm. well from august 1986 all well, that changed okay being born in Australia does not automatically make you a citizen. All right. If you're born in Australia at the time of your birth, one of your parents has to be an Australian citizen or Australian permanent resident. Otherwise, you don't get the citizenship. If one has, then automatically. One has citizenship or is an Australian permanent resident, you do get citizenship. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, how does this, uh, th does this work? I, I, I'm, I'm a student in Australia for four years. Mm -hmm. Just happened uh, there is a baby um, and um, the student is not Australian citizen. The child... Or at least the, yet Australian yes. citizen. The child, the child obtains the visa of the, major, of the primary visa holder in the family. Okay. So if the father is a student, the mother is a secondary holder on okay. that, like she's on her husband's visa, right. the child enters that visa. So the child also has a student visa oh. as a secondary visa holder. Is that the, okay. is that the, as a dependent. He's under the umbrella. He's under the, the umbrella. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Okay. okay. He's not automatically Australian citizen. No. Okay. No. In, the, in the future, being born here does make you uh, in a better position to apply if you grow up as a child born in Australia? Doesn't really. I mean, unless the child has become a permanent resident at okay. some stage, that's through the parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's what we have now. Um, there's a lot of people that used to live here years mm -hmm. ago who are now wishing to return. Never got the citizenship, but they were permanent residents at the time. So they had, or they could have had a residence permit. So it all depends on how long ago we're okay. talking because phrases and terms change. Okay. Now, uh, I am 30, 35, I'm already mm. Australian citizen. And uh, we spoke about the parents and, dependent, and it depends if they can uh, support or not um, the visa. But um, is it the same rule applies for my brother and my sister or just my parents are different than my sister, there's siblings? No, there's no sponsorship for any other family members. Not anymore. Not anymore? Not anymore. It's In only the 50s and 60s, I know. Okay. My parents, I mean, they could sponsor and bring over a cousin, invite them. Okay. Uh, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, but only, there is exception for the parents only? Only for the, the parents. The parents, a child. A child. Okay, and your partner. And your partner. Yes. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't spread to any other yes. sort of relatives, now, inclusive so siblings. People may say, well, why a child, if the person is an Australian citizen, Yes. Okay. The child would be an Australian citizen. Yes, yes, yes. But there are cases where the parent may have become an Australian citizen after the child was born. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah. that yeah. child yeah. may, that parent may have divorced. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, or it could be with the same partner. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That that citizen has had, a, like became a citizen through a skilled visa or whatever, and uh, after the child was born. Mm, he could okay. be the biological father. There's still a child visa right. involved. Okay? okay. Interesting. Thanks for this information. Very, very informative. Uh, and um, now, 
in family migration, um, with your experience and with those who do come with that, those sort of visas, what are the most common issues that they do not take into account and they come with surprises with Australia? What are the issues and the problems that they face usually migrants when they want to apply and they say, oh gee, you have to do this or... Yes, it does seem very strange to them. Um, I suppose, okay, um, there has to be a guideline put forward, okay? okay. Um, when, for example, immigration uh, considers an application for mm -hmm. a partner, yeah. relationship, whether it's a marriage or a de facto, yeah. they want to be able to assess that it's a genuine relationship and it's an okay. ongoing one. Now, we've had a lot of things in newspapers and everywhere in the news that you know, okay. there's been some weird things that have okay. happened. Um, so they, they do look out for that. Mm -hmm. So they have to set certain ways All right. for them to be able to see, for you to be able to prove to them that mm -hmm. your relationship is genuine and okay. that you were living together the past five years. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. For example, I'm just saying, right. because yes, that's yes, what yes, you're yes. saying, five yes. years. So they're saying, well, show it to me. Yes. yes. All right. Um, and, and you're required to have all the paperwork um, you, accompany yes. that. Sometimes that doesn't work with the cultures of where people are coming from. Okay. Oh, okay. We have cultures where, you know, there's one account which one person holds, all yeah. the money goes in there, that person makes a payment, all the bills are in their name, and suddenly you have a partner that's got nothing to show that she was even living. And I'm saying she, because it, that's why it usually happens. Yeah. Okay. Can't ha doesn't have anything to prove that she was actually living in that house. Uh, okay? okay. So we do, we, we try and work out different ways. Sometimes, and, and I spend a lot of time talking with okay. my clients, okay. um, getting to know them, getting to understand them. And we, what we could say, we chit chat. Is, I is, like to chit chat because it gives you information. Is immigration they, flexible to the different cultures they people are. coming from? They are. They are. For example, are. if you come from Afghanistan, you might have certain paperwork, but don't look for those because they don't yes. have it. They, they do. They do. They do. They okay. do take into consideration different cultures and okay. the way that they work. Okay. Um, so, they, they, but there's ways that you can show a okay. relationship. So we don't always. We've got a guideline. Yes. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't find other little things that can actually show it. And uh, to, your, to, to, to your judgment, very, very quickly, is there any prejudice from immigration department in, in relation to the countries? No. Not really? Not really. Okay. Not really. They are looking at the facts. Yes. I mean, they're looking at a partner visa. Yes. They are looking at the facts that they need to look at regarding the partner visa. Excellent. Of course, if they get, for example, a partner application for a de facto relationship in a country where de facto relationships are not allowed by law, well, they're going no, to knock the application back. <laughs> okay. Kelly, thank you very much for being with us today. It was a pleasure. And um, uh, we'll be very happy to have you back again in our program and uh, to talk about skill migration specifically. Today okay. it was more, exp uh, more for family uh, migration. Uh, thank you again and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Uh, uh, to our friends and viewers, thank you for being with us and uh, tune again next week at the same time and we're going to continue with skill migration. <laughs>